Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I would hope for the best. Um, we, we, I did want to at least try to talk about it a little bit because we did had like text conversations about what was happening earlier. Um, now I have to uh, consider maybe a plan to visit Georgia uh, for a solo trip. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, oh, I think we're sh- shifting the, uh, the podcast to, to what's been happening a little bit since I have somebody that's, that has historically been a journal, uh, um, been in journalism. Uh, I want to pick your brains about what, what just happened now with the capital. I know how we were just talking mm-hmm. about local journalism, but we're talking about stuff in a national scale. So, yeah. Yeah. So today is Wednesday, January 6th. It's eight. 14 p.m. Um, in California, and this morning, a group of Trump, of pro-Trump uh, agitators rushed um, the United States Capitol, and uh, yeah, they got in, and they were chanting um, what were the, what were they? What was that slogan? Stop the like steal. Stops the steal. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, re- yeah. I, re- I remember stop the count right before because this was before Ossoff's victory, so this was a little bit up in the air. So the Georgia Senate runoffs was like yesterday, and so um, uh, for whatever reason, when I was tuning in on one of those live um, um, reports, I guess when uh, when you have like newscasts right there, the chant was stop uh stop the vote and i was just like what is this november all over again <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah right stop the vote stop the steal yeah it's essentially a group of of people were unhappy with how with how the uh, presidential election was uh conducted and um they thought that th- they believed that i'm sure they still believe that that uh president trump should uh, extend his four four year um, mm-hmm. four years in office. They couldn't accept that Biden had won the won the presidential election, and um, yeah, this this crowd was really agitated. They began as protesters, um, but uh, if you rush a government building and you start breaking windows and start like threatening authorities on the ground like you become rioters so people those those folks are rioters today and um they were so aggressive that that one one of them was killed Mm -hmm. um which is extremely extremely unfortunate um yeah, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. I, it's, it's... Yeah, today is a lot of emotions right now, and and I think I um I said it before the podcast, and I think maybe at the very very beginning of the podcast, it's like it's a mountain of so many emotions right now. You know, there there's the ridiculousness of it, there is the there's the the humor in it, but there's also like a deep tragedy when it comes to you know people dying and and like the and there is a fear because it's like if this is happening right now. And the the engines of a functioning democracy is being uh, like this big wrench is being put in. You're like thinking it's like, wait a minute, what what what's what's happening here? You know, mm-hmm. you, like all these all these things are happening all at once, you know. And so it's 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 probably one of the worst lifetime movies right now that we're living in <laughs> where where. <laughs> where all of this is happening at once and i just it's it was almost something that we could have predict we we probably predicted because you know we've have this president that has kind of stoked the fires right you know and even in his uh recorded one one minute speech that he kind of had today it was that you know like oh, please go home. But also this election was rigged and, you know, I know it and we all know it. And it's like, you know, you, you doing this weird double speak thing where you're, Mm -hmm. you're condemning the people that has came here. Right. But you're Mm -hmm. still sowing the seeds of this to continue beyond 
what he's doing right now and it's it's worrying it's troubling and it's kind of scary you know for me because you know uh coming from a family of a southeast asian descent like you do have a um a a good population of that community that still believes in that mid-century communist threat and really believes that Trump is the person to, to do so. Like today, I literally saw a South Vietnamese flag within the crowd. And I'm just like, it was like perfectly put, like in the middle of the screen, a South Vietnamese flag. And I was just like, well, that's either a, a Vietnamese immigrant family that's there, or I, I don't know what else to believe. Like this is happening, you know, because. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, there are. Uh, there are pro-Trump people all across our, our country, and there are Republicans all across our country, and they have different backgrounds. I, I, know, I know many that aren't even citizens, but um, so they're, yeah, there is, uh, they're extremely diverse. Um, they don't really fit the mold of like angry white guy. Which yeah. I think I think uh, a lot a lot of folks think of when they when they think of uh, alt right alt right leaders and believers. <clears throat> um, yeah, but um, I mean I I honestly don't think that there's. I mean it's it like we live in the United States like like I think that not we have the right to to you know lean left lean right and to not agree with the voter with like who has elected um in public office but um at this point like a month and a half away from the election like any type of claim of voter fraud of illegitimate counting has been has been passed through court. It's gone through the, the proper channels, and it has been shown to be fruitless. <laughs> the evidence is not there, mm -hmm. and um, so with that information, I think that the protesters turned rioters. I th I think that they don't believe. I think that they don't believe in the democratic system. Mm -hmm. and are frustrated with it and oh man i don't know i'm I'm still processing it and yeah. wrapping my head around it this like this broke a couple hours ago and it's still very fresh so i'm yeah, still figuring and... out where i stand but yeah it's complicated it's complicated yeah it's a, it's kind of a rough <laughs> a start to 2021 well well to be fair by contrast, we started 2020 thinking that we would be in a World War III with North Korea. So <laughs> I guess <laughs> I guess we're we're I think we're par for the course when it comes to early January, beginning of the year funks. Yeah, um, I there are some small victories. Yes, of course. I, th I if if there's any indication of my audience, I do tend to lean progressive when it certain comes to certain things so i am pretty happy that georgia the result of georgia happened um but i'm also you know it is it is kind of worrying too because you know we we've kind of have this situation now i think what 2020 has happened and what coronavirus has happened is that we have kind of a really fractured situation where there is a lot of fights between um I would say centrist, but like corporate Democrats versus progressive people that I'm, I'm more aligned with more progressive people than, than I am with these like corporate, like, Hey, let's, let's have this middle ground way, a certain sort of situation. And I'm like here, I'm seeing more homeless people. I see a situation where if you've lost your job, you lost your man, uh, you lost your healthcare. Therefore, if you get the coronavirus, you are screwed, hmm. you know? So so all those things are writ large and i would hope that there are there is a movement to say hey like listen how y'all been running this show for about 15 years it ain't be working for us no more you know and so that that's what i hope like my 
I, I am cautiously optimistic and I know that's probably difficult to say to talk to folks about or talk to my family about, but, you know, and, you know, I just hope for the best, but for today, I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm, I think I'm with you. I'm in this funk where I'm like, dude, this is just kind of weird. I just can't believe something like this would happen. I wouldn't even think something like this in my lifetime, you know? <laughs> and I, and, and, I I should have saw this coming because this was a president that was kind of predicting this or said said as much, you know, days leading up to this day. It's like come to protest at the Capitol, and um and and I haven't heard this term before, but Socratic terrorism, I guess, where you said, oh, where where, where you say it's all like, well, you better come to to the Capitol, you better protest, but you know, I'm not gonna, you know, like it's not it's not me doing it. You know, like somebody better do this or, you know, and um, I think the biggest example of Socratic terrorism is like s- somebody got to do something about that person, you know, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing anything, but, but somebody should, should do something about that. So that, that's basically what this president has done is just said, hey, just come to the Capitol and protest, show your anger. Mm-hmm. You know, there are other conservatives around the party that really really said like took a step further and just a- enacted on violence and so i'm just like okay well this this could have been seen you know and yeah yeah definitely yeah there's a huge difference between protesting rioting um yeah i think everyone has the right to protest peacefully i think everyone has the right to be frustrated but when you start hurting other people and Mm -hmm. start putting lives in danger and especially when you carry weapons there were there were bombs found around the capital this afternoon yeah uh, that have since both the rnc and the dnc right yeah offices yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's horrible. Imagine if they had gone off today. Like that would be absolutely fucking tragic. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The for for our audience today, uh, I I don't think we have easy answers today. I think uh, we're, we're just I think we're just living in this moment. I think we we just gotta at least talk about it or just be like like with it. You know, and I think that's probably the most healthiest way to kind of deal with this. It's just like, okay, this has just happened. Let's talk through this because, you know, I I, I can't imagine what somebody young today or or new immigrant family coming into the United States, you know, wide eyed, believing the American dream, and then seeing this, you know, mm-hmm. and me, I think me being kind of like a first or a second generation in this. I, I forgot how the first generation and second generations worked, but being born here and my parents having to travel here, you know, for a better life. I wonder what's going through their minds when they see something like this, you know, and within that immigrant Cambodian American community, like how are they, how are they thinking about this, this moment where uh, to some degree, they put a lot of their bets on Trump and this, and if, if Trump, if the people that were for Trump is basically breaking into the Capitol and destroying stuff and putting their lives at risk and like literally putting lives at risk, like we've got, yeah. I don't know. I think there, there's got to be a big question that to ask yourself on like, if this is what conservative leadership looks like, then, and I'm not trying to say not be a conservative because you got to weigh those things. It's like, what does it mean at this moment? And like, what are my values? And can I still stand behind a party if they're still doing those things? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And yeah. And to add to that list of what the, uh, the agitators in DC are doing, um, I think uh, the next item would be disrupting the democratic process mm-hmm. because in Congress, they were certifying Joe Biden's win, both in the House and in the and in the Senate, there and they were listening to um, members of those on both sides that uh, object to 
to the to the president elect's victory. Mm-hmm. This happens every time. This happens every time a president is elected. This is the only time it's ever gotten this big of a spotlight because of the of the storming <laughs> of the Capitol. Um, but but these rioters disrupted the the democratic process, and that's just something that I'm not cool with. You, yeah. you know, uh, like I four years ago, I had to accept that President Donald Trump won the election i wasn't happy with it i wanted someone else to win uh but i accepted it and i didn't put anybody's life in danger um, Mm -hmm. not accepting it so that's why in this situation i'm not uh i'm i'm not um i'm not cool (laughs) i'm not cool with what happened yeah same (laughs) same like we're all individuals in this thing you know like it's you know even for me Biden wasn't my first choice either, or like all of these other things, but like, I am willing to take those, those wins and, and Mm -hmm. take those losses too. Like when 2016 happened, I was just like, are we seriously doing this? But (laughs) for after a few days, I was like, okay, well, how bad can this be? Fast forward (laughs) sort of situation. But, uh, but yeah, like I, but I didn't go out to storm the capital of california or like i i didn't go out and and do those things um i think for those people that uh, went to went there and did that i think that there's got to be a long hard look at them themselves and uh, for those that do that know who of whom react in those ways need a long look at themselves and and say like is this what like if there if there were to write a story about this, who am I gonna be in this story? Am I the hero or am I the villain? Or am I gonna be the person that's gonna be remembered for this? You know? Yeah. Because I, I don't know if <sighs> sorry, I don't know if that person that lost their lives today wanted that to happen, you know? Or like I don't know if if that individual wanted to be remembered for that. Yeah. So I and just it's it's weird. It's funky. I don't. I really don't know how what what I'm feeling right now. Uh, but I'm I'm I think I'm just trying. I think I'm still on the process of of like trying to talk out the funk almost. Mm-hmm. And and really and uh, but I think if if folks in my audience want an easy answer, it's like I don't condone any of this. This is not. This is not right. <laughs> and it's it was. To me, in some way, my chaotic personality of me was like, it's been, it, it was funny for the first couple of weeks. After a month, it started to get more darker and darker. And then it, it led to this. And I'm just like, okay, well, when did the f- humor of this fade? And like, I think I'm questioning it myself. It's like his whole Stop the Steal and Rudy Giuliani and all of these this stuff. It was a lot of funny f- for me. Mm-hmm. But at what point did that humor turn into this violence or how much did that humor kind of contextualize that violence almost, you know, or like hit away that violence to this corner versus mm-hmm. actually talking about it, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I think part of it is I think I feel slightly guilty. I don't know. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I share your type of, um, your your type of thinking on on um on like seeing the comedic side of it and laughing a little bit about how the last month has um how this country has been boiling i think personally i tend to laugh at things when i'm uncomfortable or i'm like looking for looking to settle down and like laugh and smile because that's the only way I know how to process um, news, um, bad news really, is to just lighten it and sprinkle it with a little humor. But in this case, um, yeah, there, there were groups of people who didn't believe that President-elect Joe Biden uh, won the race and mm-hmm. they also didn't believe that the that in the states where that were turned blue 
um, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, this group of people in DC did not, uh, this group of writers in DC did not believe that those local governments, that those local states, um, they didn't believe in their, their processes, the processes mm -hmm. that um, filtered through the allegations that the vote, the voting over there was illegitimate. <clears throat> that process has been done in the last month and a half, and it has been finalized. It has been shown to, shown that President-elect Joe Biden won in those states and deserves those electoral college votes, mm -hmm. but they didn't accept it. And they still think it's fake news. And that has led to the events that happened this morning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know what the, what, how we're supposed to, I didn't know how we were supposed to react um, election time in November. I don't know how I'm supposed to react right now. Um, I don't, yeah, it's, uh, it's frustrating and I'm like trying to process it. And I think uh, many of your listeners might, might uh, be feeling that uh, yeah. today, Wednesday, January 6th as well. I've, um, before, but before leaving today, I just, I, I would like to say that there was a moment today where I think somebody was asking me, Mr. Kim, what do you think about what's happening today? And I was just like, I don't know what to tell you. I really, really don't know what to tell you. It's like, I know the dynamics of the organization that I'm trying to promote. And like, you know, they're, they're of more recent immigrant classes. Like your family has moved here because you believed in, in this notion. And for me that, you know, free and fair elections and all of these things and for this to happen and they're seeing this they know they know and they understand they know how to feel it you know what i mean like yeah. like these students know how to feel it and so when when something like this happens i don't know what to tell them i don't think i'm equipped to understand what's happening i don't know if i have the right answers you know because I'm only one person and I don't know if I have the responsibility to be a person that answered those questions for them because there's so much emotion that comes around when, when, it, when, when it comes to this. Um, and I know that, uh, like, like I said, I don't want to be a downer, but this is just how I feel at this current moment. And what I've learned recently about, you know, trying to, you know, you know, you know, talk more about emotions and feelings and, um, you know, talking yeah. to a professional lately is that, believing in the, in those moments where you just don't understand and just say i don't know i don't know i i really don't know and i wish i had the answers and just admitting hey i wish i knew how to let you understand this but i i'm still kind of grappling with with this information as much as you are so just know that i'm not trying to ignore you or nothing i'm just mm -hmm. i'm just trying to learn what's happening now Yes. Yeah, I think a good piece of advice for your students would be to urge them to read and to urge them to follow the facts and urge them to trust what they're feeling. Um, I, I think that <clears throat> I think the really the worst case scenario is, would be for a student to get access to misinformation, to lies, and have that then feed their prejudices for the next four years and then for them to spread that to their communities and to their children. Um, I really do think that, again, going back to local news being awesome, um, I, I, I do think that sticking with the facts and finding local sources and talking to local community members like Mr. Kim or local city council members or local leaders of community groups. I think that is also a part of that process of finding out what the facts are and finding out what your community is doing and feeling in reaction to the national climate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then thank you for tying it back in the importance of uh, local publications and, and what makes up a community. and. Um, 
thank you dominic i i, I didn't want to end on this awkward note and like, i know <laughs> i know i but i i think part of the reason why i didn't want to try to attack uh, talk on the subject at the very end of the show is just that like you know i it's happening in real time almost and um i think yeah. i just needed that moment i don't know if you needed that moment but just needed that moment to at least kind of talk about it a little bit and um i think now it's all public to the world <laughs> <laughs> so Yay. Th thank you again for please co uh, coming on to the uh, program. Um, I like all the journalism that you've done through the Alhambra source, and I'm hoping for bigger and better things and hopefully uh, for you to be coming back to the community and doing something. So um, I'm, I, I hope for the best. And, um, you know, it really sucks what's been happening to all of these uh, local publications. And um, I just hope what the Alhambra source has did for the span of a decade. It's like literally a decade for a span of a decade um, really did something. And I feel, I feel it, you know, I know it kind of happened when I was kind of middle school or like, right. No, it's 2010. I was in high school with you in 2010 mm -hmm. when it started. Yeah. So, so throughout my college experience is like, I started to kind of learn more about my community at large or the Alhambra community um, in, um, in essence, because I was going to Cal State LA. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm basically working, not working and living there. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Th th thanks so much for having me, Brian. I, I do think that your listeners are going to walk away from this episode thinking about what makes up their community and thinking about why or why not they don't have a local publication in their community. And honestly, I think that's a, uh, that's a good start to to changing the world yeah start asking those questions y'all so thank you for watching this podcast hopefully you like and subscribe you know and uh ring that bell for any notifications and uh until then uh we'll try to do this more weekly <laughs> <laughs> i'll try i'll try i don't know if i can make any promises anymore it's been very busy lately so we'll <laughs> see you on the next time <laughs>